What's going on, everyone? Happy Monday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I really hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Monday edition of the Pandemic Update for Monday, June 24th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and any other virus that could be a health threat to you. Let's face it, there are a lot of different viruses out there, including COVID, which is still in circulation heavily and in some places as you're about to see in just a moment covid is continuing to rise and is a problem it's still causing hospitalizations it's still causing deaths it's still causing long covid then you have other viruses h5n1 that's up and coming measles cases of that pop up mpox flu regular common colds, all this different stuff. You don't hear much about it on the news. That's where I come into play to tell you what's going on. I give you a 15 to 20 minute video each day. Today will be somewhere in the 15 minute category for videos. And yes, we are going to talk about all these different things. Want to stay informed? Subscribe down below, give this a thumbs up, share these videos with anyone you know, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment down below. Alrighty, New Zealand, a big unexpected rise. 8,943 new cases and 25 further deaths. They still have 241 people in the hospital. Despite there being 25 further deaths, there have been no one added to the ICU. The previous update was 4,788 cases, which in that update, if we click on it, that was actually down from, and I do believe it is here somewhere. Yeah, that was actually down from the previous week then, which had 5,230 cases. So they're kind of doing a double peaking. It was 5,230 cases, then it dropped to 4,788 cases. Now it has risen once again to 8,943. I'm not seeing anything stating that, oh, they missed some cases last week and there was a backlog. They just, perhaps at this point, dropped a little bit and then went up much, much higher than they have gone at any point during this wave. Not good. All right. Are you someone who uses cannabis? Well, if you do, I have bad news for you. Study. Cannabis use linked to severe COVID-19 cases. So researchers at the Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis recently reported findings that link cannabis use to an increase risk of severe illness related to COVID-19. So if you're using cannabis and you catch COVID-19, your risk of catching severe COVID is higher. That's right. That's what the new research says. I will make sure this gets tweeted out and of course added to the archives on the website. So you will be able to read the full and entire story. Alrighty, moving on to this now. This is relatively interesting. Poll, majority of Americans say COVID-19 policies were a good idea. But views of individual policies vary. So this is really interesting. And this is not a big, uh, they say majority of Americans, but this is not a big poll. 1,017 people is what I'm seeing. A majority of Americans say four key pandemic policies were generally a good idea in retrospect, including those related to mass requirements in stores and businesses. 70% of the people polled said, hey, they, they would be okay with that. Healthcare workers, vaccination requirements, 65%. Indoor dining closures, wow, 63% out of the 1,017. And K through 12 public school closures, 56%. And then 42% of Americans say all four policies were a good idea. And another third, 37%, say only some were a good idea. Only 20% say all were generally a bad idea. I don't know who they precisely uh, polled, but no, let's see here. It tells us right here. I'm saying I don't know, and the information's in front of us. Views of these pandemic policies vary by subgroup characteristics, including political party affiliation, race, ethnicity, and metropolitan status. The percentage who say all four policies were generally a good idea, 71% were Democrats, 44% independents, 18% Republicans. So right off the bat here, if we were to switch this up a little bit, say increase Republicans to 40-something percent, 
Yeah, that would probably be, you would see a lot less people in favor of this. What's interesting, though, is we see a number, a good number of people in favor of this, and 44% are independents. That really uh, says something right there. And it says black adults, 62% Hispanic, Latino adults, 55%, white adults, 32%, people living in urban areas, 55%, suburban areas, 39%, 29% rural area. So again, if you were to increase rural area to say above 50%, I think we would get a big difference in the results. All right, relatively interesting stuff. Uh, poll taken here. I'll make sure this gets tweeted out so you can read the full thing. I just happened to find this beforehand, and I only read the first part of it. We read the rest of that together. So this is really interesting to see that, hey, there are a large number of people that would still be interested in masking, but, again, would they actually do it when a push comes to the shelf? I don't know, because I'm not seeing a lot of people mask. I mean, I'm seeing a few more now than I did back in, say, early May, but it's not a lot. All right, doctors warn more young children are catching COVID in the latest outbreak. This is in Taiwan. So in Taiwan, they are reporting an increase in the number of children catching COVID. And as we know, here in the United States, it is summertime, which means it's time for those summer camps to open up. Uh, there could be COVID outbreaks at summer camps. It's happened before. Just a couple of years ago, there was a massive one at a Boy Scout camp in, I believe it was North Carolina, and there were others as well. That's one that comes to mind. All right, BNO's weekly update. This week, 80,464 estimated new cases. The average is 63,970. That is up significantly by 6,000. 496 in the hospital up slightly 1768 that's up by 61 but again the vast majority of hospitals don't report if they did report that number would probably be quite a bit different in the icu 209 we know again that number would be different as well up by two deaths 459 we're still seeing quite a few deaths here in the United States. Far too many. And the number of deaths this week is up over last week. Average number is 449. That is up by 6. COVID cases are continuing to rise across large parts of the United States, U.S., with cases going up in an estimated 39 states. At the same time, COVID levels are relatively low compared to the winter months. The most notable increases this week were reported in Indiana, that's interesting, where there was a 43% increase, Puerto Rico, 30% increase, Puerto Rico is not doing well at this time, from everything people have told me, Florida, up 29%, California, up 26%, New York is up 24%, and Tennessee is also up 25%. Only 35% of hospitals in the U.S. submitted COVID data this week, which is similar to last week, but down from 91% in early May. This means actual case numbers and hospitalizations are higher than reported. This is the 223rd week in a row with more than 400 new COVID deaths in the U.S. or nearly 1.2 million deaths during the same period. And finally, so far this year, more than 3.5 million COVID cases have been reported in the U.S., causing 494 hospitalizations. And remember, it does not include these at-home tests in most states. You know, these things right here. It doesn't include. In most cases, this is PCR, some rapid testing as well, but not those tests that you take at home. You take it and see, oh, Am I positive? Oh, I am. Okay, throw the test away. Don't report it to the state. I mean, that's kind of what happens. So we are seeing a rise for cases at this time. You can see on their chart, cases are starting to rise. Moving on now, taking a look at today's allergy map. Drum roll, please. 44% of the country is in low to medium status. Orange, which is relatively high in Oregon and Northern California, but no red. That's good to see. Also orange in portions of California, or excuse me, yeah, portions of California, and extreme southern portions of Colorado, and extreme northern New Mexico. Not doing too bad today in the east. Taking a look at air qualities, you're going to see air qualities in the east are somewhat mixed. Improved in portions of New England, but back across Pennsylvania, still some yellow. Uh, it's better than what it was, so we will take that. Southeast North Carolina is seeing some problems, as is South Carolina. Of course, Oklahoma 
and Arkansas, Louisiana, some problems as well, and our usual hot spots in California, though not as bad as the previous few days. All right, heat-related illnesses, it's continuing to increase all across the country. Take a look here. In the Northeast, we can see it's increasing. Pennsylvania has not increased much yet. Probably will on the next update. And we can see in the Southeast, it's increasing. It's also increasing on the West Coast as well. Taking a look now at what is going on with my other Twitter page, you can see here, Climate Data Report. And as we refresh this, you can see here, I did post a video about severe weather. As severe weather is expected today in several regions, especially in the Great Lakes region, but that and the Midwest, and then again tomorrow in the Midwest, and then on Wednesday in portions of the Mid-Atlantic region. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. And of course, you can follow my other Twitter page at Climate Data Report, and you can also follow my other YouTube channel. Let's, let's refresh this. Here it is right here. You can see Climate Data Report, and there's today's video. Alrighty, moving on. Philadelphia. This is not good news. On Saturday, they had 885 EMS incidents. On Sunday, heat-related illnesses, and maybe people being sick as well. 916 EMS incidents on Sunday. It was a very busy weekend for EMS calls in the city. They did not do the weekend total. Maybe they will post that tomorrow. Taking a look at what's going on in Montgomery County right now, and we can see here there are a few calls for EMS. Wow, we're seeing a lot of other stuff going on right now. That's not good whatsoever. Nine EMS calls there. Taking a look at Chester County, just a few calls going on at this time. Respiratory difficulty is one of them, and hypotension, emotional disorder, you get the idea. So not terribly busy, but there's calls to be had at this time. Alrighty, taking a look at Walgreens this week, and you're going to get, a, you may get a little bit confused with this. When we go to the actual initial page here, it shows the positivity rate is 30%. That is up by 2.9%. The prior week was 27.1%, and testing is also up as well. 4,366 versus 4,213. When we click on a lot of these states, for some reason, look what it's showing here. Pennsylvania is bright red, but yet it's saying that it's dropping. However, when we come down here and do go to current view, we can see here it's actually given a completely different result. And this is why it's showing that uh, things are going up. Pennsylvania, 27.3%, but nationally, look at this, 34.1%. So you can see here, clearly nationally is rising, and that's what we're going to stick with. We're just going to stick with the, the this blue chart that shows the current trend on the map. And let's go to a state that's actually reporting. Wow, Arizona, 46.8% positivity rate. New Mexico, 46.9%. California, 29%. Alaska, is coming in with zero, so we have to go to another state. Hawaii is still coming in with zero. Massachusetts did not report. Neither did Maine. Illinois, 31.9% this week. Florida is 40.1% this week. Texas is 34.4% this week. How about Mississippi? Mississippi, again, did not report. How about Louisiana? 30.2% this week. Arkansas, 27.8% this week. Missouri, 36.6% this week. And look at the chart in Missouri. It is rapidly going up. North Carolina, 31.1% this week. And when we take a look at South Carolina, 30.7% this week. And how about Washington? 40% this week. Wow, Washington's really doing bad. Oregon, do we have anything for you? Nope, nothing out of Oregon either. How about Nevada? Nothing out of them. Nevada, can we come up here to Minnesota? 30.4% this week, and we can see here it is rising at this time. Alrighty, moving on, let's take a look at two wastewater sites and see what's going on. First off, let's go down to Memphis, Tennessee. We'll take a look at this, and we can see Memphis, Tennessee is relatively flat for COVID at this time. No issues with RSV, influenza A, influenza B, HMPV. However, norovirus is starting to rise once again. No MPOX detected, and there are a few detections of hepatitis A at this time. Now let's go out to California. Let's do a big update, shall we? Let's do go big by taking a look at southeast side of San Francisco, which continues to rise at this time and is in high levels for COVID. RSV is relatively flat at this time. Influenza A is rising ever so slightly. Influenza B 
Not much of an issue with that. HMPV, slight issues, norovirus dropping. They did have some MPOX detections back in April, and no detections of hepatitis A at this time. When we take a look at epidemic status, it is increasing in several states, growing or likely growing. It's not dropping anywhere at this point. Why? Well, because we have the KP.3 variant at 33.1%, and then we have KP.2, which is at 20.8%, but the up-and-coming LB.1 variant is at 17%. 0.5%. Taking a look at New Jersey today, where only 58 out of 70 hospitals reported, that results in 201 hospitalizations. If they all reported, the number would be higher. Seven people are on a ventilator, 17 people in the ICU, discharges 26 at this time. Taking a look at New York State today, they reported 1,180 positive cases that to end last week and taking a look at their hospital situation we are noting here the hospitalizations in new york state continue their steady rise at this point though still much lower than the winter time they are now up to 688 people in the hospital and 47 people in the icu something we will have to keep an eye on going forward is as to whether or not new york state will actually hit 1,000 hospitalizations with this wave We'll have to see. Only time will tell. And let's just quickly take a look at hospital admissions in New York State. And you can see here, when we take a look at the hospital admissions, they are continuing to rise as well. We will start the new week with New York State tomorrow, where I suspect hospital admissions and hospitalized patients probably will see a decent size increase tomorrow. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Monday edition of the Pandemic Update. If you enjoyed this update, give it a thumbs up. Want to see more updates like this? Subscribe down below. Share these videos with anyone you know. Hit that notification bell. And, of course, leave all of your comments down below. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and thanks for watching. Have a fantastic Monday evening.